everyone so today we've got a new model from american optical this is going to be the ao1002 we're going to talk about just released i actually just got my hands on it yesterday and only found out about it last week that this was even coming so let's take a look at this frame and see what they've done to bring a new style to the american optical family First of all, if you're new here, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button down below so you can support the channel and keep me here so I can keep doing this stuff because it's all fun and I like it and I hope you guys do. So hit those buttons down there and we'll do some things. But let's get over to the AO1002 and see what this guy is actually all about so this one is one of their vintage archive pieces they pulled the AO Samson which was one from the 60s I think that was right that was worn by a few famous people one in particular Truman Capote is kind of the one that made it famous this is not the Samson. This is the new version, and apparently they're going with numbers now, so the AO1002. They took the AO Samson from the vintage archives, they updated the look, and they made it more flattering for more faces. At least that's what they tell me they've done, and I don't actually disagree. So the sizing is good. It's a little bit better for more modern faces versus some of the vintage stuff. It's always questionable whether it's actually gonna work on modern faces for the most part. You just never know. Sometimes it doesn't translate well to the modern era. It's tough to tell. Regardless, in this case, with the updates, I think they have done a very good job. It has that signature AO look that we've seen on all of the temples at this point. Very, very common across the brand. As far as how it actually fits on the face, sizing initially looks like it would be pretty small as this guy does ring in at a 51 millimeter lens and a 19 millimeter bridge. But then you do still have these three millimeters horns on either side. And I can't quickly do that math in my head because I just can't think today, but roughly you're talking about 125, what is that? Yeah, about 125 to 127 millimeters overall width. Now, in comparison, this guy is right at 140, definitely on a larger size of anything I wear there. Most of the frames I wear are gonna be around 130. So you can see this thing is not terribly small. This is a little bit of pressure here, but I get that even in my Porsche frames. Overall size fit really nice on this frame. You can see it gives a nice clean look on the face. And even for me, I can't really wear round styles that particularly well, but it does have enough added structure. And that's kind of what they've done with that shape is to attempt to make it more flattering. They've elongated it a bit, so it has kind of that classic panto feel to it. But the little cut to the bar here in the middle, right on that bridge, is just something that helps add a little bit more structure and look. And then, of course, you've got those classic tension. <laughs> classic monoblock temple attachments like you'd see on a lot of other brands. Now the lenses, there's nothing polarized in this one yet, and I think that's just an availability thing. I assume at some point we'll see stock polarized lenses. Personally, I don't really care. I'm not a huge polarized guy. Check out my other videos on that. We won't get into that today. Maybe, maybe. As far as the overall tint though, this one is the rose gold frame with the sun vogue pink gradient is what they call it and what that amounts to is you've got a little bit of a purple darker top there so you get your darkness and fades into that soft pink rosy color at the bottom now we would call this a double gradient they call it a gradient it's sunglasses versus fashion tints versus whatever have you but you know i think this is a nice clean look the colors they've chosen are really good you've got the standard gold's gonna have the green lenses you've got this one as i mentioned the rose gold with that pink double gradient i'm gonna say it even if they don't and some nice classic color choices overall overall weight 
you know, it's really light. So they use nylon lenses in this one. You've got a backside anti-reflective coating. So you're not gonna see your own eyeball reflecting into your eyes while you're trying to look out and see whatever pretty thing out there you're looking at. I think that's a great choice. The nylon, you guys know I am a little bit of a nerd when it comes to the optics, so it's not glass, it's not super scratch resistant, it's not perfect, but the nylon performs overall pretty well and keeps weight down. So, you know, still a good, classy frame. Price point, they're not anything insane. You're gonna get these for 189, no matter where you buy them. That's, that's just how that's gonna work, like it or hate it, but overall, I think it is a good buy. Nice, timeless piece to throw into the collection. Very easy to wear. Very, very nicely made for the price point especially. So I don't think this is something you can go wrong with. I think it would be a great addition to the collection, but give me your feedback. Let me know what you think. Is this a trend you see continuing as they go through their archives and dig out new frames? Do you think we'll see more new frames? All of this new adaptations of their old authentic vintage catalog or will we see more actual vintage restoration It'd be interesting to see because we've already had the saratoga we've had the times and the tournament brought back in their original form directly from those archives and then we've had the 1004 and the 1002 come out which were modern adaptations of other pieces in their catalog i think we'll see a little bit of both but i'm curious to see what you guys would like to see and i bet they are too anyways that's all i've got for today i will catch you guys next time let me know your thoughts